Hey guys, so today we're going to create a bootable VMware ESXi USB flash drive installer. So basically we're going to, we, we have the, uh, the ISO for, um, you know, the CD image for installing VMware ESXi and we're, we're basically going to flash that to, U, to a USB flash drive. And um, in, in the next video I'm actually going to show you how to uh, install ESXi on a Mac Mini. But that's the next video, you might want to stay tuned for that, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, etc, etc. Um, anyway, so um, I've done this already, I've done this once, and I, I actually, actually installed ESXi on a Mac Mini, so and I have another Mac Mini that I want to install it on. I could just use this same existing disk, but I wanted to do a quick demo showing you how to uh, create a disk. So um, let's jump right into it. You're probably tired of hearing me uh, not show you how to actually create the disk. So um, let, let's get right into it. So we're gonna start out, I'm actually gonna bring up the disks tool, um, just cause it's good to visualize it. You don't really need this, but this is what's attached to my system. Um, so I get a couple one terabyte disks. Um, one is SATA, one's NVMe. Um, they're both M2 disks, and then I have this USB drive right here. So this is this is my current US, USB uh, thumb drive that I'm going to uh, I'm going to use as my install disk. And uh, let's see here. So close that up. I'll first notice that this is Dev SDB one so our, that's the partition is one it's dev sdb is the disk now you're going to want to be careful don't overwrite the wrong disk i'm going to show you how to do this from the command line now normally you could use a tool like etcher or something for a normal like an ubuntu disk or something you would just like uh you know put, tell it where your your iso image is and tell it which disk to use and just flash it like that but apparently it's a little bit trickier with uh vmware now, if you, you know better than me, leave a comment down below and let me know. But apparently, um, let me see if I can zoom in on this so you can see it a little, a little bit better. Now, if you check the link in the description by the time I upload this video, I should have this updated. I should have this in an actual document on my site. Um, so I'm gonna have a link to my webpage that shows you, you know, how to actually do this in case you wanna like copy and paste commands or something. Anyways, um, <clears throat> So the, these are the commands that I use. These are like the, the options in FDisk and stuff. So um, I should actually add another one here. All right, FDisk-L. So all right, we, we noted this is SDB1. Um, so I'm gonna go over here and say FDisk-L, whoops, dash L. And uh, oh, the other thing is we wanna run as root now you could just put sudo before practically every command you run, but that's gonna get old quick. I mean, it, however you can if you want, however you prefer to do it. Um, here I'm just going, going to, uh, there we go, root access and fdisk-l. So there you go, you can see a bunch of devices and you'll note these, uh, Devices at the top. See, this is my this is one of my um, one of my SSDs. It's an NVMe drive, and SDA is my other SSD, another NVMe drive. Um, so if you if you go down here, you're gonna see SDB. This is a USB drive. You you can tell it has a FAT32 file system on it and 16 gigs. You know, it's listed as 14.3 due to I guess overhead. But in, in, anyways, um, so uh, so yeah, this is the device we want. Um, it, it's already partitioned with a file system, but we're going to redo all that just to show you how you would do it if you had a new drive. Um, so anyways, we're, we're going to start out, the, yes, so we're, we, we are going to start out by uh, just saying fdisk, um, and, and I guess, you know, you, you don't need to say sbin, so you can just say fdisk dev sdb, so ju just like that. All right, we're going to fdisk this specific device. And now there's a few commands we're gonna try running for this. So um, first we're gonna say D to delete a partition, and there was only one partition, deletes the first partition. Now we're going to say N for a new partition. So um, N, and then uh, we're gonna say P for primary partition, and we are going to say one because we wanna give it partition number one, and we're only gonna create one partition anyways. Here you can just hit enter, um, select the default, it's gonna be the beginning. Hit enter again, select the default, it's gonna be the end. So um, 
that is fine um, you know what? we're gonna say yes this didn't have um, this didn't have the same file system type I don't believe I came across this error the first time I did this and if you have a fresh USB drive that you just you know took out of the packaging you're probably not it's probably not gonna prompt you for this but you, you can go right ahead and say yes all right um, so if it doesn't ask you that fine all right so we've created the new partition and we're gonna say T to change the type and we're gonna say C and there we go it's it's set change partition type of Linux partition to a Windows 95 fat 32 partition um, that's a pretty old um, uh, I guess the file system is old. I think you would probably use that same partition type for Windows. I'm not sure. It's it's been a while since I've manually partitioned anything for Windows. Any case, we set it to C, and that this has been working for me. And this is this is what I would recommend doing. This is what the official instructions tell you to do, anyways. So, anyways, we're gonna say A, and um, this sets the bootable flag on. So now our partition is bootable. And um, then we are going to say P to print it out. This is going to print out our partition table. And we see we have one partition. It's bootable. You know, see the start and end, the sectors, the size, the type, and uh, so on. So anyways, <clears throat> we are going to type W to actually write it. Because all the stuff we've did, done now, um, deleting the partition, creating the partition, that didn't actually get written until we typed W to write it. So W will write it syncing disks and exits out of the F disk tool. So we now have a brand new uh, so, so we need when we now have a you know our brand new partitioned USB drive. Um, now we're going to we're gonna you know I don't need to run SBIN. Um, let, let's see we, we can just say MKFS VFAT and that's a command that will um, create a VFAT file system and we specify F32 I believe that's going to give us a, yeah, a FAT32 file system. Um, and we're specifying a USB device. So this is our SDB1 is our partition. Um, so we're going to just copy this command over here and paste it in over here. And this is actually formatting the device. And you can see a little thing popped up in the corner here. And it's it's just telling me that I have a device there mount, I guess mounted. And I or, or I could mount it. In, anyways, that doesn't matter. So we, we want to install syslinux on the device. Um so we're going to run syslinux on SDB1. So paste this here. And there we go, not a whole lot of output from it, but that's fine. And we're going to write this MBR, binary image, over SDB1. So copy this. Yeah, and, and with all of these steps, you know, anything where you specify the device, just make sure you're, you're using the correct device. Don't accidentally type S STA. Or if on your system, SDB is your hard drive, don't use the same command. If, if your USB drive is a different is a different drive, make sure you change the device. Um, yeah, so don't wipe out your hard drive or destroy your system. Um, all right, anyways, notice this is STB and not STB1 because we're referring to the whole disk and not just the partition because we're writing over the master boot record. So the master boot record is for the disk, not for a specific partition. So now we're going to mkdir a temporary directory to uh, mount this over. All right, it's USB disk and it already exists because I've already done this. Um, you know, what? I'm going to remove it and just create it again so that I, I can show you how I copy all of this stuff over. All right. Um, if you've not, if you haven't already done this once, um, you won't need to do this step. RMRF, all right, remove this directory, and now we're going to create a fresh version of that directory that's going to be empty. And now we are going to mount, we're going to make sure we mount our USB disk in this directory. And there we go. Um, so we're going to make another directory, which should already exist. Paste it here. All right, already exists. Um, let's say RM. It should be an empty directory right now. 
and it was so all right create the directory again no big deal um, now we're gonna mount our our ISO over the CD directory I had some issues with this before that I didn't bother to troubleshoot um, so let, let's see here yeah I failed to set up loopback device um, for etc etc now I, I hadn't actually trouble shot this before um, I probably should I probably should have done that for this video all right so I had cut away for just a, a minute there um, and I actually did troubleshoot what was going on with that it, it, it took took me a sec but um, I, I was just doing something silly and um, I was I was logged on as root but I was uh, you know specifying the desktop as relative to my current directory which was roots home directory and not my personal home directory so um, yeah, I, I fixed that by just specifying the exact path. You know, I, I added, um, you know, home user one to to give it the exact path, which, which is actually correct. And, and this command actually works totally fine if you specify the correct path. Now, I w it wasn't giving me a message saying, hey, we can't find the ISO. It was just saying failed to mount it. But anyways, good to know. Um, whoops. So um, I'm going to show you how we can mount this right here. Paste that in. And there we go. It's mounted, right protected, read only. All right, sounds good. All right, now we can actually see the contents if we say ls esxi cd-rom, and that's the contents of the cd-rom. So, anyways, that's that's what's inside our ISO image. Now we're gonna do a copy dash r. Um, so paste this over here. Basically, dash r is recursive copy. So we're gonna copy everything that's inside that ISO image to your USB disk. So copy all those files over, and there we go. And now we are going to move. Um, so we're going to rename the. There's one file in the USB disk called ISO Linux CFG. We're going to rename that to Sys Linux CFG. No big deal. Copy this command, paste it right on over here, and there we go. So just rename that one file there. Now we are going to edit a file. So there's a file called syslinux.cfg, the one that we just renamed. Copy this. We're going to use VI. Now if you don't know how to use VI or don't like it, you can just use nano instead of VI. That works just fine. Nano is a little bit more intuitive if you aren't familiar with VI commands. I like VI myself. So anyways, jump in here and you're going to see a line that says append-c boot.cfg and at the end of this line just add a dash p1 and there we go and, and save this and there we go we've edited that now we can unmount the usb disk and the cd-rom so we're going to unmount both of these guys and we're ready to go so um that's pretty much it we now have uh and we, we can ignore this 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 is not needed anymore all right so um that's it i'm going to actually remove this um, and there, there we go. This, this is actually all this info you see in my, my notes on the side here. We're, we're actually going to have that posted up on a, on a web page, and you'll see the link to that page in the description of the video. So um, that's it. Uh, you're going to want to that that is how we create the uh, you know the boot, bootable uh, USB drive. Um, so I actually did it kind of more correctly this time. Anyways, um, if you want to see this in action, we're going to install, we're going to use this USB drive to install ESXi on a Mac Mini um, in our next video. Now, I've already installed it on one Mac Mini, and um, I'm going to ins now install it on the, in my next video, I'm going to install it on another Mac Mini. That way I can set them up with clustering. I'm going to also attempt to set up a, a vCenter server. So I'm going to get vCenter set up, and I'm going to... Uh, um, yeah, so that, that's the purpose for having two ESXi servers and two Mac Minis. I also just uh, I also just ordered a couple more Mac Minis. Um, we're, we're, I'm going to use for KVM. I'm probably going to set up a Proxmox server. So another thing to stay tuned for. A lot of things you, you might not want to miss. So you're probably going to want to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon. Um, you know, just so hit the bell icon, just so uh, YouTube will notify you when I put out a new video. We have a, a ton of new video content coming out, a um, ton of stuff planned for the future, all sorts of interesting videos you're going to want to stay tuned for. Um, you might want to give us a thumbs up if you feel like we deserve it for this video, if you found this useful. 
Um, if, if not, um, that, that's also fine. Uh, but the, the real important thing is leave a comment down below. If you know something I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are probably even more experienced with VMware than I am. And it may, maybe you can point out something that I missed or, or, or whatever you want to say. Um, I want to hear your feedback. I want to know what you guys think. So just leave a comment down below. Comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I want to hear it. Um, that that's pretty much it for today hopefully hopefully you enjoyed this watching this video hopefully you found it useful um as always thanks for watching and uh we will see you guys next time